We're back for another episode of my F1 23 driver career mode and this for the first time ever is going to be us racing at Las Vegas which I'm very excited about. All I've done in this game is a five lap race online with the my team car which basically is very little information. I haven't done a full proper race with you know strategy pit stops a proper qualifying all that stuff so this should be really interesting now before we jump into this guys check out the last episode link in the top right a huge huge race last time out in brazil sprint race spoilers ahead so this is your chance to click off the video now and yeah get up to speed so here we are new weekend and new upgrades on the car and also a new patch which has been released today which is 107 which also fixes the bug that I was worried about, hence why there was no video yesterday, which is the contract negotiation window basically appearing between Vegas and Abu Dhabi. That has now been fixed, so we can now carry this career mode normally into season two and things can progress as normal. So the timing has worked out pretty decently on that aspect. So as you saw, we took care of some upgrades and bought some other ones. We now have a marketing department event, which I went ahead and actually asked to kind of improve our social media presence as that was something I wanted to try and go for. We then got a few days later, a supplier upgrade for general wear on the engine. Also heave dampers to improve tire wear. And yeah, overall the car package looking a lot better all around heading to this weekend's race. Now, yeah, this is a new track. A new experience i don't know what to expect as always 110 ai all the trimmings so we're going to make it as hard as possible as you can see last race p5 in brazil we won in mexico p5 in cota so we're on a pretty good hot streak right now we are currently the sixth best team alpine have just edged ahead of us but overall the top five six teams are very close red bull now though starting to open a gap at this crucial point in the championship either way let's talk about practice and yeah this track has a broken ai delta um, I tried to do the race strategy program and it was just impossible, literally impossible. Uh, nowhere near, just a couple of seconds off every single lap. And yeah, hopefully uh, that will get patched, you know, sometime down the line or improved because yeah, the target lap time is ridiculous. I will admit, I'm not super fast. It's my first laps around here, literally my first four laps pretty much, you know, with this car and this entire crew mode combination. So. I, you know, did a setup which was the preset four, increased top speed. I put a bit more wing on and yeah, I tried to give it a go and it was nowhere near. So I looked at the lap times. Uh, we was losing a lot of time in sectors one and three. Sector two was pretty decent. So I think I know where it is where I'm struggling. You can see we're last in practice and the pace wasn't looking that great. We was definitely in the back foot because those practice lap times was on a soft tire using pretty much all battery, all lap. So that is pretty fast pace in terms of you know what i can do so i had some thinking to do and had to go back to the drawing board for qualifying and figure out what strategy to kind of approach and attack this qualifying with and in the end i went for a bit more front and rear wing so i went up two clicks on the front and the rear wing based off the fact that i was down in sectors one and three in practice and equal in sector two so yeah qualifying time Let, let's see if those adjustments make a difference. I was learning the track, learning the break points, uh, getting better and better every passing lap. So this is my first time lap in the session and this would be our first banker. This will give us an idea where we are and how far off the pace we might be. So up to the line and it's going to be a 1 minute 32.6 P11 right now, last of those who have set a lap and 1.1 seconds off Carlos Sainz, which yeah, that's a pretty big, pretty big hit. That's a long, that's a long, long margin, a big gap to a nearby car. So I then decided to try for a second time lap. So as you'll see here, we're starting off the lap and we're gonna see if we can try to make some adjustments and improve in those areas where we're near where there's time to find. Through turn one though, I got the marbles on the way in and the back end was just skating everywhere and I put my hand up just out of you know pure frustration. I actually ended up pushing on with a lap even though I was half a second down in the, you know the, that kind of straight. And uh, we found a chunk of time pretty much everywhere so yeah overall this will be an improvement I don't know it's going to trouble some of the times above but it will give us a better understanding of where we are pace wise and also we know that sector one is in the bin but sectors two and three are decent so as you can see uh, my sector one is at minimum half a second off just based off the, the delta alone so if I find half a second that gets me somewhat close to Joe and Stroll so uh, yeah we'll try again I look to improve my sector two has dropped a bit compared to practice so those adjustments haven't really worked as well as I hoped for 
in terms of my pace. And I kind of realized during qualifying it was more of a, just a me generally just lacking knowledge of the circuit and not really maximizing it rather than it being a setup issue. So yeah, let's try and see if we can improve as we have 40 seconds to go. So turn one, and this is where we know there's time to be found. I stay off the marbles this time and keep it nice and clean. Turn two, this is the corner I'm really struggling with. I just don't know what lines to take. There's a bit of camber on the final part, which you can actually use. And I didn't really notice that until the race. And uh, it's just an evolving thing. Anyway, down to turn three, braking at the 100. Look at the inside curb. We brush the wall on the outside and somehow still find time. This right here, the worst braking zone of the track. There's no reference. It's so blind and it's so hard to get right because you have no visual cue to brake. So you just have to guess and it's really tough because it's on a curve. So it's unsighted until the last minute. We then go through the entirety of the chicane, try to get a good exit, flat out through this right and left. And now another tough braking zone, unsighted until the last second. Then it's a very short brake zone before this left hander where you have to take a lot of inside curb to maximize timing. And to be fair, you can probably cut that even more than what I did in that particular instance. As we now take a breather down the back straight, we've lost a bit of time up by as much as 8 tenths at one point. We're now 7 tenths up. We're snapping with a new benchmark as we head down to this next braking zone, sector three. Break at the 100 on the right hand side, down a third gear, inside curb. You want to take either a lot more than that or less. You either clip it or you take all of it. You can't really... Okay, there's two minutes left in this session and we're in the drop zone. We need a quick lap or that's qualifying over for us. You can't really go between and as you can hear Mark pressing me here to try and get a lap on the board. It's going to be a 131.5 and that is last place in qualifying. Yeah, really tough. Um, Things I learned in that one is uh, we will probably be a lot stronger in the race. I simply have a lack of laps under my belt around here. That's the simple reason. And that will improve in the race. Lap by lap, we'll get better and better. So we just got to try and make sure we stay competitive in the early stages. And then hopefully by the end, we'll be fast enough to compete and do well. One thing I noticed and a few tips in this I can give you guys. I thought the real key time loss was sector one. So... Turn two is a real issue. I've got to try and figure out what the line is for that. So we'll figure out in the race how to do it. And also turn four, so the long left-hander before the Mickey Mouse chicane, before the kind of planet globe. That needs to be fixed in terms of I need to try and figure out a way to go faster through there. Those two areas are where I lose the most time. We then didn't help ourselves by losing time in places we were strong. So the end of sector two and also the final chicane, a few details I had to improve on. So yeah, qualifying done. Let's get to the race and let's see if we can try and iron out those wrinkles and hopefully have a decent performance. Tickets for this one sold out in a matter of seconds. Some for as much as a million dollars. There's a massive interest in Formula One in the United States, so it's no surprise we have a third race in America. Welcome to the Las Vegas Grand Prix. 17 corners, three straights, two DRS zones, and the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas as we race around the 3.8 miles of Sin City. The strip has been taken over to become a straight tonight, commanding top speeds of around 212 miles an hour. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Sergio Perez will lead us away from pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Ocon, Leclerc, Hamilton, Gasly, Russell, Sainz, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Stroll, Albon, Sargent, Martinez, Hulkenberg, Joe, Sonoda, De Vries, and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Anthony Davidson also joins me in the commentary box today. The key now will be to keep in the right mindset. We've seen time and again that things go wrong if you just try and do the minimum. Not necessarily because of the pressure, but because it's different to your usual approach. They'll need to avoid that and stay focused today. Now then, a few things to observe before we jump into the race. Number one, we are in a big challenge because I clearly don't have pace around here. So this race is going to really help me because I think following other cars will help me learn lines, general cornering speeds and understand exactly where to improve and where to find a bit more lap time. That aside, we have two big challenges this race. Number one, as you can see, we are facing the barrier. So if we scroll over, 
we're about 25 to 30 degrees facing in the wrong direction. So yeah, this is basically aiming towards turn one. I'd say right about here, this is fair. So on the grid slot, when we finish the formation lap, we're gonna have to try and line up as much as possible with the straight line to try and limit the turning down to turn one. But yeah, if it was on the inside line, it wouldn't matter so much because you have that space on the outside, but I don't have that, the barrier's right there. So we're gonna have to try and make up for that at the race start. As for other updates, we're starting from P15. So somehow, you know, after a terrible qualifying, there's a bunch of penalties and we are starting much higher up. So we may have a chance of actually doing something this race. Strategy for this one is going to be a medium to hard tire, very simple one stop. I'm expecting maybe a safety car or a VSC, it could be a new track, could be some chaos, especially with the barriers so close. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Fuel wise, 1.5 extra, as it is a very demanding circuit on fuel. And yeah, we'll see exactly how the race pans out. So yeah, guys, predictions down below. First ever time racing at Vegas. Where do you think we'll finish? Like the video, subscribe, let's get into it and let's see how it goes. Right, this is going to be a key race start. So like I said before, lining this up is going to be the key element. Just going to get a little bit of a rear burnout on the go. The AI are taking some interesting lines in terms of their grid lineup. Albon taking a very compromised line. We're going to try and see if we can angle this a bit. There we go. We'll take that. Decent. Here we go. First ever race in Las Vegas for me. Away we go. Decent start. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the internal combustion engine. Be aware that we're going to start to see a loss of power. Nowhere to go right now. Very narrow first couple of corners. Hulkenberg gets the jump. Let's see exactly also how we're looking in terms of pace. You know, straight down speed, cornering speed. I really don't know where I stand. Now then into the Mickey Mouse section for the first time. We've got cars either side, but none of them committing. So we'll take the line. Hulkenberg, Albon side by side as we race into this very, very not enjoyable chicane with these extremely high curbs, slightly off cambered. It's just narrow, man. Can't find a way through right now. Now we go into this little straight with a couple of flat out turns and then into the worst corner on the track for me. I really can't figure out this break-in zone for the life of me. So we'll just take a cautious. Hulkenberg locks up. We'll go through. Right then, now we're going to have to drain the battery to try and stay ahead. Let's see how we're we holding up in terms of straight line speed performance. Hulkenberg pulls alongside. Now we're dead even as Sonoda looks to get in on the action, just using the entire battery deployment. So now they're trying to go up the inside. We're going to hold it around the outside. And that's P15. So at the end of the first lap, we're back where we started. We're completely out of deployment here. So we may come under some pressure into turn one if we're not careful. But we're still going to be okay. Or not. Oh, no, Sonoda. I was going to say Hulkenberg. There's Sonoda up the inside. But we keep him behind. Let's see if we have any pace to try and do something here. If not, it could be a long race. Don't really want to lose the RS of the cars ahead. The AI seem to be very, very reliant on the ERS to try and challenge on every straight. We are so far down on straight line speed. My wings are too high. We're okay at VMAX, but acceleration isn't there. I wonder if maybe the engine wear is part of the reason. We should have taken some fresher components for this one. Didn't really factor in that element so much. I was more focused on trying to learn a new circuit, but we're out of battery already, so this should be interesting. DRS now enabled. Unable to catch up to the cars ahead. As Sonoda all over the back of me here on that soft heart. Okay, DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when you're within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Right, so DRS zone coming up as we brush the wall there. I really don't know how to do that corner. I can't figure it out, but Sonoda's gonna go through. Not entirely against it, we can try to follow. Hulkenberg's gonna breeze by as well. We are down on straight line speed badly here. Right, so we've managed to reform the train. Sonoda pretty quick on that soft tire. And him and Hulkenberg using battery. I've caught up to the cars ahead, and there's just one big pack of cars. So I reckon this is what's gonna happen now this race. It's gonna be just a constant battle with these long straights. And it's just gonna be about trying to stay in the train. 
and be smart with our overtakes. We're not going to be quick, but we can be smart. And that's where the race IQ is going to come into effect. The key thing here is we cannot get dropped out of the RS range. Hmm. Purple Sector 3, that's something. Something to our name. Well, I'm struggling to hold on big time. AI seem to have either the very low wings or endless battery. I can't quite figure it out. And they're not really battling too hard, so I'm not losing too much time right now. Watch this. Look how that AI pull away here. I'll use a little bit of battery in the first gears, but look at the Delta. So, so, so ridiculous how overpowered they are here in terms of straight line speed. So clearly setup adjustments need to be made for next season and um, a much lower downfall setup which was my original intention I should have stuck with that to be fair went way too high on the wing we seem to have a big scrap now as well all of a sudden you can see on the mini map we've got a leading group being led by an Alpine I believe right now and then we've got this secondary group which has now formed and is kicking off brush the wall there tyre condition still looking good now we're going to see how that AI behave in World War Combat. There's also a group behind, of course, with the remaining cars. So there's three big packs right now. That's when things could get interesting. Williams' cars side by side. I'm going to stick my nose up the inside of Hulkenberg here. This is how our race is going to work. By trying to use these moments to make our own race better. Just like that. Clearing Sonoda and Hulkenberg. Sonoda back through though using the battery. They are so strong when they choose to use the battery. It's ridiculous. Up the inside. We'll probably get repassed now anyways, but just gotta try and gain positions gradually. Battery is really tough to recharge here. If you end up using it a lot, it just drains so much with these long straights. VMAX is great, you can see in the VMAX we're, we're actually fast. Well, DeVries is behind, so that's not really a concern. It's just acceleration. We get wrecked. I'm going to try and pass Sergeant here. Slight lift. That yellow behind is gone. Those soft tyres, I wonder if they're just starting to fade a bit. Through we go. So P14 now. Hmm. Ocon's in the pits. Oh, lock up to turn one on the fronts. I could have sworn Ocon was, if not leading, was up the sharp end. He has the fast up of the Grand Prix, so he had some pace, but that's an early stop. Or at least I think it's an early stop, as nobody else has pit with him. Either way, I feel starting to spread up again. And up, up ahead, that lead battle was costing them time, so we're all kind of bunching back up again. Sergeant. Now two seconds to drift, he lost the RS on me, and just like that, he's been dropped instantly. So this is a battle for P11, technically P12, as Archon has pit. But I'm sure things will bunch up again in the Sergeant pit, so that soft tire doesn't last very long. Got to stop locking up into turn one, man, that's a costly lock-up. Bottas may actually overtake Albon here again. There we go. Just like that. Albon's probably going to overtake Bottas again here and swap around, just like on the last lap. Bottas without DRS is completely defenseless. And to be fair, we may even get a chance here. We've got a huge run. Sending Bottas defensive. Offline. This will now give us a chance to try and overtake the Alfa Romeo as we get to the inside line, which is what we want. There we go. We're approaching the pit window now, and you're going to be on hards next time. Bottas holding on, but now runs out of tyres, runs out of road. Unable to go on the outside there. Oh! Big one. No tyre concerns at the moment, just focus on the driving. Oof, got extremely lucky there to not get wing damage. Must have hit it with the front left tyre. Tires starting to go now, first signs. Well, they're not that worn, but starting to lose the rear. Right, here we go, Bottas again. 
having to repass. This will be a much easier one. And this will throw us onto Albon with the DRS effect. Just like that. Arcon. Lurking as he goes for the move on Bottas. Arcon's the car to follow right now. He's so quick on that fresh hard tar. They are going to be pitting now as well. This is pit window time, so we'll let Arcon crack on. We'll see if we can try and maybe stick with him for a bit. He would be the car to help us catch the faster pack ahead. So we'll try and see if we can stick with the Alpine. Wow, Arcon's going for it early. Absolutely flying. To be fair, it's not just against me. The DRS, ERS effect in battling is so powerful here. Albon gets overtaking. And we're going to look to pass, although Arcon won't have the RS, so he's going to be a sitting duck. Here we go. The double slipstream effect. Albon and Arcon. And we're going to get the inside here. Breaking a little bit later. Okay, ahead. I might actually try to pit, to be fair. Use the clean air. That might be a way to get back into this race. Alright, first time to this pit entry. Never done it before. No idea where the hell I'm going. And that's speeding. <laughs> right. Well, that's that then. Took a chance. F around and find out, as they say. Anyway, we'll try and serve that at the end. Hopefully, we can build a gap so it doesn't affect us. Some cars are two stopping, by the looks of it, but none of them are ahead of us. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Right, fresh tyres. Tyre wear won't be an issue from now until the end, so we can enjoy these a little bit. Albon 1.1 adrift. He's probably got the RS. Or not, actually. To be fair, I think we actually managed to keep him out of the RS range. But we're on our own right now, but this Alap is key. Yellow flag. Oh. Is it an actual yellow flag? Retirement? Yes it is. Okay, be aware there's an incident in the next part of the track. No overtaking through the yellow flags. Yellow flag behind, but now one in front. It's Holkenberg. Yep, engine gone. Right, we'll see if that triggers maybe a safety car. Lando's in the pits. Lando in the pits. We're actually keeping Albon out of the RS range here, so I should got some decent pace. Okay, clear. Let's see, so cars in the pit lane. This is going to be key now to see exactly where we are in this race and do we have a chance of points. Tracking mid warning. Do too much inside curve. I'm trying to take a risk now and push quite hard as I'm trying to see if I can catch up with the cars ahead. And also open up a gap behind. Pace is much better now. We've had that first stint to kind of learn the track and where the AI are strong and now we're running on our own pace and our own confidence and now I'm kind of cooking a bit more. Right now we're in a bit of a pickle because Sonoda Sargent are relaying and also Bottas and Alvin are doing the same thing so they're basically repassing themselves on the straight with no time loss so any time that again they then pull away on the straight. Ocon's in again now this could be interesting he's going to rejoin right behind this would be our possibly golden ticket if we could just follow Ocon his pace will be insane especially on that medium tyre. So let's see if I can try and stick with him. This might be the way forward. So Alpine going aggressive with Arcon on a two-stop. He's got potentially a race-winning pace. All right, here we go. Arcon's going to probably go for the move. Possibly on both cars, as he's going to be in full power mode. I don't really have a lot of battery to do this, so I'm just going to try and be smart. So now going to be in big trouble here without DRS. As Sergeant, I look for the pass. We might actually lose contact with Arcon here because of this, which really isn't ideal. And they're probably going to both stop this lap as well, which is the worst thing about it. Yep, both going to pit. We'll use all the battery here to try and stay with Arcon. But this is now our legit position. So P12 is where we're at. And we're at the ice range. Not ideal with the timing there, but the cars ahead. Real shame. It's crazy how we're not that far away. Like, if you look at the mini-map, the pack of cars ahead, which is eight seconds up the road, is an actual battle for the win. That's how many cars are in that scrap right now. Now Albon and, ba and Bottas are battling a little bit, so it's not so much a, an exchange of position and you know relays. They're more battling, so the gap is actually going up a little bit. So I may have a chance of beating these two if I can keep it clean and keep the pace up. They might 
They might just hit themselves out of contention at this rate. Uh, one bot has side by side for the final corner and chicane, so they're bleeding time here. We may have a chance of pulling this off. We're also catching the cars ahead. They're also battling quite heavily now. The AI has kind of stopped the pleasantries with the relays and they're now battling for position quite heavily. Lando is on him pretty much on his own, just battling Alonso and uh, tail into the points. But I haven't seen Stroll's name flash up, but I know the Aston Martins are in that scrap. Bottas back through an Albon, but that might change again on this straight. We just need to go side by side one or two more times just to help really open up the gap. Place is good enough to keep him at bay. Well, there's Stroll's name, so it is Stroll, Alonso and Norris and Hamilton pretty much battling for those final points positions. So hopefully Norris comes out on top. Good news is the Aston Martins aren't really that high up. Meanwhile behind, those who are still battling. But they're battling cleanly, so they're kind of relaying places again, which isn't ideal. Last lap. Cars behind are not going to battle. They're too close. Albon's going to breeze by. Shame. We've got the gap to four seconds, but it's not going to be enough. Meanwhile, up ahead, it looks like Norris is going to finish, I think, ahead of both Aston Martins, actually, and get a couple of points. But yeah, P14 for us today. That's going to be the best we can hope for. The Stappen wins. Just got to close out the race as we actually had a decent pace in the end, but I just, you know, couldn't catch up with the cars ahead. Had we been in that DRS fight, on the same strategy, we actually we've had a half a chance, but still happy with my first race. We got pretty good at the end and check a flag. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. Well, there we go, guys. That is it for the Las Vegas race here today. The first time having a proper race here in career mode. And yeah, Verstappen, the winner, Russell second, Perez third. So this track very clearly suiting the Red Bull quite decently. Alpine to be a fair looking pretty strong. Gasly P4 and Ocon P7 on a two stop. Had he one stop, who knows what could have happened. Either way, crucially, Lando P8. And that means he finished ahead of Alonso and Stroll. So we actually outscored Aston Martin this weekend, which is awesome. So yeah, P14 for us. We tried, but... We just lacked a little bit. You can see the fast up as well is also a bit off the pace. So it says everything you need to know. Hulkenberg, the out of the race. Standings wise, as you can see, P7. That might just be it now for us in terms of the battle versus signs. Uh, that was a pretty hefty blow. So the target is to try and beat Alonso. Four points is the gap heading into Abu Dhabi. Lando, of course, is out of contention. He's finishing P9 now mathematically regardless. So yeah, Verstappen also has a hand on the title. It had swung around at the last moment. Verstappen with that win today and Leclerc finishing P7 has really, really hurt his championship. Leclerc led for so long and had such a lead, but then in classic Ferrari fashion, they've bottled it. Verstappen needs a point to become champion. In the constructors, P4 for us is now mathematically confirmed. So Aston Martin can no longer get ahead of us. So P4, objective done for season one. Mercedes, 20 points ahead. So it's going to be Merck versus Red Bull for the constructors in the finale. And yeah, as for us, the only thing we have to play for is to finish ahead of Alonso in the driver's championship. So yeah, team goal secure. We can race hard and give it everything in Abu Dhabi. And yeah, guys, that is it for today's episode. Leave a like, subscribe. Apologies, it wasn't a points finish. I wasn't as fast as possible. I wanted to keep it on 110 and not change the difficulty to keep it fair. But yeah, as always, a big shout out to the members of the channel for 
supporting me. You guys are legends. Much appreciated. Always see in the comments. So shout out to you guys. Check out the videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And uh, yeah, guys, cheers for watching. And I'll see you next time for the finale of season one in Abu Dhabi.